Good morning, Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Going to go back to the practical videos like we started with. I've got a chore that I've been needing to do on Mama's new saddle, and we started to do it, and then I said, you know what? There are probably some other folks who would like to be able to do this, to understand what's going on. So let's make a video out of it. So that's what we're going to do. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take, so I bought, so in October was Mama's birthday, and I finally was able to buy her her chosen brand new saddle, the saddle she found, she loved, that fits her. <laughs> and so I bought Mama a new saddle. And then the one she was riding, we just moved into the rotation for the school saddles, all right? So it's a McCall Lady Wade saddle. She wanted the rough out with like what she had, but she's a girl. She wanted to be a girl and she wanted pretties and stamping and stuff on it. And so we found one that actually fits her. So um, anyway, what we're gonna do is we're going to put her saddlebags on here. Now, mama is one of those people that, oh man, I just got the eye. I'll be careful, I'll be good. <laughs> be careful. All right? She can't go anywhere without something a lot of some things. If we're running into town, she'll have a water bottle and she'll have a cup with hot tea and she'll have this and she'll have her phone and she'll have that and and and, uh, and she's the same when she rides. All right, she always has to have a water bottle, maybe two water bottles, maybe a snack, always has her phone. She always uses a saddlebag. I don't, but she does. So now we have a pair of saddlebags here that uh, John Brand at Buckaroo Leather, Buckaroo Leather made us. He even put a uh, put our brand on there, uh, and you can get these Buckaroo Leather, um, and uh, so they're good, nice quality leather, very well made. John makes everything quality leather, and so he made these for her, and uh, and so we're going to install those on her saddle. Now, let me take a step back here. Let's talk about saddlebags for a second. I'm not going to go into the whole thing because I've done other videos on this before. But there's two basic approaches to this, okay? Now, we are focused here on wrangling, packing, and cowboying, setting up gear, teaching people and whatnot. And if you're wrangling, and for those of you who are just coming in, you don't know, Basically, the definition of a wrangler today is somebody, if you go to a guest ranch, a dude ranch where they give trail rides, uh, the wrangler is a person who works there, who takes care of the horses, catches the horses, feeds the horses, saddles the horses, and then guides you out and takes you on the ride, all right? And then does that all day for everybody that comes through. Now, a wrangler will leave the barn and be gone on average one to four hours. Now, I've worked in places where be gone six to eight hours every once in a while, but it's, it's not real common. So he doesn't need giant saddlebags. He doesn't need, or she, don't need to take a lot of stuff with him. They just need water bottle, pair of gloves, um, you know, sandwich, um, cigar holder, okay? They just because they're going to go out and they're going to come right back, and they can restock and resupply when they come back, all right? And you don't want a lot of giant saddlebags. All right, two things. Number one, when your saddlebags are too big, it, it's just human nature. You're going to carry too much stuff, okay? Secondly, when your saddlebags are too big, um, what you're going to get... So the weak point, this is a large pair of Triple K. Now, I use these from time to time specifically, Okay. Large saddlebags means more stitching. It just means more stitching, okay? You've got more stitching to go around. Stitching is the weak point in saddlebags. Um, people who, who are not where they can financially afford to buy a really good set of leather saddlebags will buy a big set of cheap saddlebags. We were cowboying in Colorado up in out of uh, Gunnison, and we had split all over the mountains. Uh, to go and gather strays and to check. And I'm riding along, and, and on the ground I see a, it was like a little pack of granola or something like that. 
Stop and pick it up and I go along and there's an empty baggie that had a sandwich in it. Stop and pick that up and go on a little further and there's a water bottle. And I stop and pick that up and when I get back, one of the young guys that riding out there, he had a giant set of these, you can buy them off eBay and everywhere. They're made in India and, and it's junk leather, junk sewing, junk, but they were a giant set of saddlebags and the stitching in the corner had ripped out while he's riding along and everything had dumped out, all right? Um, and if you're, so if you've got big saddlebags unnecessarily, they're just not handy. So what you want is a pair of smaller day bags, okay? That's what I've got on this saddle. This, um, these bags are what I used when I was ranching in Colorado. I just needed a water bottle and a sandwich and a pair of gloves. That's all you need, all right? You notice they're permanently mounted on the saddle, all right? They're always there. And, uh, and so that's what we're gonna do here today. And that's what we're gonna show you how to do. We're gonna put mama's saddlebags on this saddle permanently, all right? Since she always needs them, they're always gonna be on here. And it's clean and it's neat. Uh, and it's just a good way to do it, okay? So I've got my tools. I haven't gone into this saddle. I don't know how this is put together, but I know pretty much how it's commonly done so i've got my tools what i'm pretty sure that i'm going to need now and i got everything out here because i hate cutting and splicing my videos all right so hopefully whatever we find under here um i've got the tools i need to take it apart so first thing we're going to do is we're going to undo the blood knot mama if you can come in here a little closer so these this is very common on these saddles where you see these laces put together, this is called the blood knot. Now you need to understand this anyhow, because there's a lot of different reasons and repairs and different stuff that you need to understand how this blood knot works, okay? So we're gonna start, we're gonna take it apart. Now one of the best tools I have found for me to start unlacing these blood knots is a hoof pick, okay? Uh, Cause it's got, it's like a screwdriver, but it's got a hook. So it just gets in there. We just get in there and we take this and we unlace it and I'll show you how it's laced so then you'll understand if you understand how it is laced you can better understand how to unlace it change tools and get in here Leatherman tool you're going to want a pair of needle nose pliers oh this is going to work better and uh, I pretty well always keep a Leatherman tool in my saddlebags. That's where this was this morning. I pulled it out of my saddlebag in the shop, so I got it with me. So we're gonna pull that out like that. And then we're gonna pull this out. I'm gonna be careful not to scratch mama's consoles. I don't want her to beat me up on camera. <laughs> okay, so now before we go any further, I'm gonna show you what happened here. All right, so you understand what happened. What you got, this is one long, this is one long piece. This is done properly, all right? This is one piece of leather that goes in through holes drilled in the tree, goes underneath and comes back out, okay? And there are slots that are slits right here in each one of these, okay? So what you do when you're putting them back together is you take the bottom one, all right, Take the bottom one, pay attention to that, and put it in the top. Okay. See there? And you take the bottom one again and put it in the top. Now, we'll do that when we put it all back together. Uh, I don't want to double up on this video. So here, what we're doing is we're just taking these apart. Okay. Now, we're not going to take this apart all the way down to the tree. I just want to take it apart enough to put the saddlebag on there. So now we're gonna take this off, take the concho off, all right? Now that's what I figured, this is pretty standard. So the leather rosette underneath here has got two nails in it. Now this is where you kinda of wanna be a little careful. So I got a small flat tip screwdriver and some of you saddle makers out there, you might be screaming and say, no, no, Dwayne, there's a better way. If you've got a little thin cat's paw, That'll work. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this paper towel 
here. And I'm gonna do this right here. So I don't tear up mama's stamping. All right, digging that metal in there. But what I need to do is I need to get under this. There we go. And I just need to pop that nail loose. See, there we go. I don't need to pull it all the way out right now. I just need to loosen it, okay? But I needed to loosen it without tearing her leather up. So if you're gonna do something, do it right and be careful. That's too big. Let me see if I can come in here with this. Now this rosette is gonna be covered up with a concho, but I still don't wanna chew it up, okay? Don't lose that nail. I'm gonna come in here and do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna put that paper towel down there so I don't dig and gouge into the leather. Saddles are not cheap these days, good saddles. Um, and they'll last forever if you take care of them. I'm gonna come in here and pull that nail out. Okay, put that here with the other one. Don't want to lose it. Pull the leather rosette off. All right, now just a note of interest, you'll see the holes here, okay? On a well-built working saddle, and some people won't agree with this, that's okay, they can be wrong. Um, the, uh, the jockey is drilled or stamped holes this is stamped and then the tree the should be a wood tree if it's right uh underneath that all this is attached to is drilled as well all right so like i said this leather string goes all the way through all the way through and then through the tree comes around and then comes back up now the purpose of that number one is just another thing that helps hold everything, ties everything together. But secondly, if they don't do this, what they'll do is they'll take the string, they'll fold it and put it on top right here and run a nail or a screw in it. Now over time, if you're working and you're actually riding and you're in trees and, and you're using this for your saddlebags and for your slicker and everything, and you wind up hung up, that's gonna pop out. When you need it, you're not gonna have it, okay? This isn't gonna pop out, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and, and we can put the saddlebag on now. And I'm not gonna do this other side because I'm not gonna waste camera time, but it'll be the same process, all right? So now when you get these saddlebags from John, or when I got these, these are uh, Big Ben Saddlery. I got these from him. They don't come with the holes, okay? Um, and so when you get them, then you can take these, put them on here, Make sure everything's lined up even. Mark the spot where they are. You can fill it through underneath and then put your own hole so your saddlebag fits your saddle properly. Now you can take a drill and drill a, with a big drill bit and drill in there. You can take a stamp, punch a hole if you got. Uh, these have got, this is nice. These have got just slits, all right? Right there where it's supposed to be. So that makes it nice. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna feed these strings do those slots. All right, now you wanna make sure you're not folded. You wanna make sure your strings are facing the right direction. Let's see if I can get my big old arthritic fingers to make that happen. I don't, you, you know, in my life of wrangling, working for outfits, I've seen so many giant boxes full of Cordura saddlebags come through that put on all the saddles. Um, you know, your Trail Max, because they're cheap, and they never last. I mean, most of them are done by the end of one or two seasons. They're shot. They're gone. And so I know leather is more expensive, but, man, leather is the way to go, okay? If you... And I'm saying this with a bit of humor, and I'm saying this gently, okay? If you buy, if you have to buy the insulated Cordura saddlebags, 
so you can have ice and cold drinks. Maybe you need to just sit in the bar and stay <laughs> home, okay? Um, if you care anything about your horse, if you care anything, anything about your horse, even remotely as much as you care about yourself, you're not going to make him carry that. You're going to make him carry ice over his kidneys so that you can have a colder drink. All right, get you a good pair of saddlebags. Um, and, uh, and you don't have to have giant saddlebags. That's another reason why I don't like giant saddlebags for most people all the time, because they will. Well, what, what if I need a what if I need this? What if I need that? And we'll pack like we do in our spoiled society today, and we'll have all this stuff. And so we've got all this weight that's not needed, not necessary, hanging here over our horse's kidneys. And then here in America, we tend to have a little bit of excess ourselves. We sit back in the saddle, and where's some of that weight distributed? Over our horse's kidneys. And so it's just, it's a, it's a safety precaution for your horse. Okay, and for you. Now, I showed these triple Ks. All right, these are big saddlebags. Now, I use these like the pack trip I just went on with the boys uh, in Idaho. We're gone for a number of days at a time. I took these, okay? Because you got to have a little bit more. Um, like I needed a bucket hat. Bucket hat is a toboggan gloves more stuff because you know you're spending many more hours on the trail and so you might need more stuff but normally you don't okay so we put the rosette on there and we're going to get our nails and we're just going to nail that right back in there so basically we're going to put everything back together the same way we took it apart now they make they make nice little saddle hammers um, but I dug out what I had this morning, what I could find. I used to do a bunch of leather work, but we moved so much. I never could really get set back up. So one of my boys went up with all my tools. And then when I thought, you know, I want to get set back up again. I found out just like everything else, the price of leather working tools has gone through the ceiling. And I'm like, well, I don't need to do it that bad. I don't need to put that much money in it. So we put our concho back on, okay? So we're just putting everything back together. Now, so here is a place where you might run into a little bit of trouble. And if you're going to get into trouble anywhere in this process, this is where you're going to get into trouble, okay? This is where you really need to pay attention. Now, these slots, so the slots are cut, so that when the blood knots are tied, they're up against the conch, so everything's snug, all right? So when your saddle maker that knows what he's doing, when he cuts these slots right here, he cuts them only as long as need be. Now, what we've done is we've added another thickness of leather. Mm -hmm. So depending on the length of these slots, the slot may not be long enough to do the blood knots, all right? And if it's not, then what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to lengthen that slit a little bit, that's where you're going to get in trouble, okay? So if you're going to do that, you want like a hobby knife or a uh, a uh, utility knife with a razor blade. You want something that's really, really sharp. And then you're just going to come in here and you're going to be extremely careful and you're just going to lengthen that. I hope I don't have to do it this morning, okay? Now, if you're not careful, if your blade is twisted a little bit or leaning a little bit and you come in there, and, and if your blade is not sharp, what's going to happen is you're going to cut half that string all the way through. Trust me, I know. I've done it, okay? And uh, you really don't want to do that. So hopefully I'm not, not going to do that. But now if you, well, that's not, yeah, I'm going to have to lengthen that a little bit. All right. So... I'm going to come in here. Now, the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to take this concho off so it's out of the way and so I don't scratch it, okay? And you don't want to do too much. If you cut your slot too long, then when you do your blood knot, your blood knot's loose, and so nothing is tight and snug and secure. It's kind of sloppy. So I just want to come in here. This, knot, this blade here is, is extremely sharp, all right? 
I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to lengthen that just a little bit right there. That's all. Okay. I'm going to do the same right here. I'm keeping my blade straight. See how sharp that is? It's extremely sharp. All right. Now, if your blade isn't sharp, then you, what you do is you balance out cutting with effort. All right. Where it's not cutting good, you have to put in more effort. Effort. All right. More muscle instead of cutting is going to create mistakes. And that, that's where you're a unsharp knife will cut you a lot faster than a really sharp knife. And it seems like a paradox, but there you go. Now I've got a little bit of arthritic hands here. And so this always kind of causes me a little bit of trouble, but I'm gonna put my flat tip screwdriver in here. This is just how I found it works for me. And I'm gonna open up that slot a little bit. Try to push that through there. I find these days my hands just do not operate the way they used to. I have more and more trouble. If I have to replace a back cinch on a saddle where they got those three holes in the triangle, I don't even try anymore. Mama does it for me. I just can't get in there. I can't. My fingers, I just can't get them. All right. So... We're bringing the bottom string up through the top string. We're going to come in here, twist that around, bring it up so everything's nice and flat. Twist it so it's flat. Come in there. Now, when you do it, the bottom through the top, there it goes, okay? When you do it, the bottom through the top and then the bottom through the top, what happens is, the top part of the string, not the bottom, is laying on top. That's why you do that like that. Otherwise, you're gonna wind up with upside down strings. All right? Now, if I can get this one more in here, I'll be done. We'll be done with the video and then mama can have the practice and do the other side. I may have to lengthen that one just a little bit more. Huh? Don't scratch my concho. I won't scratch your concho. <laughs> At least if I do, I'll try to do it in such a way you won't be able to see it. You'll never know. They got pretty conchos on here. Yeah, they're really nice. I love them. I'm going to have to learn just a little bit more. So we're gonna come in here really careful. I know I'm cutting towards my hand, but that's kind of what you have to do. So if you're cutting careful and easy. Open that up a little bit. Take our bottom string, put it through the top one. There we go. Pull that through. Now let's see, it's easier to make sure before we pull all that out that we're flipped over to the right direction. All right, pull that back out a little bit. There we are. Voila. Nice. See that? Nicely done. Now, I'm going to pull that in tight. Okay. Now, what you can do, and I'll probably go find one when this is done. You can take a rubber mallet and just kind of tap those down flat. Okay, but that's how you attach your saddlebags to your saddle. Now, 
if the day comes and you need to sell your saddle, you're going to sell your saddle because you got another one, but you want to keep your saddle bags. You just go through the process, and so they are removable, okay? And, uh, but, uh, now she always has saddle bags on here when she needs them, uh, and it's, uh, it's just a pretty cool way to go about it. What's that? What about the cinch? The yeah. knot? On yeah, we'll, are you we'll going to show that. that? So, you know, it, it's got the attachment down here to attach it to the centering, and so we'll tie those, we'll tie those on. Okay. We'll do that when she gets everything done. Um, and, uh, so anyhow, there's that, there it is. And I hope, uh, hope you learned something. I hope it was, uh, a little bit enjoyable for you and hope you pick something up. So you guys, it, today is the 20th, December 20th. Is that right? So anyhow, I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and wish you a Merry Christmas now and, uh, and happy holidays, good times with your family, all right? Have a cigar for me. Hey, you, Dwayne, you're not going to have a cigar? Heck yeah, but I'll take two. <laughs> all right? And uh, so just be logical, be reasonable, be safe, and have fun. And we'll catch you guys next time.